Today I'm going to discuss and present ORE as an enterprise risk solution. Now that you've gotten familiar with ORE, either through its C++ or Python interface, or the more than 50 examples that come with the application, you might have started building some shell scripts to help automate the sourcing of market data, trade data, manipulating that data, and running your portfolio through ORE. Although this is quick and easy to build, these scripts likely don't offer much in terms of flexibility, scalability, robustness, or speed. In this video, we are going to show how it's possible to integrate ORE into a larger enterprise ecosystem. We'll share some blueprints showing how this configuration is possible, and even demo a basic example of how it can work. First, I'll discuss what it is about ORE that allows it to be used in an enterprise ecosystem. Then I'll go over the enterprise risk design pattern, and lastly provide a showcase of ORE operating as an enterprise risk solution. Here are some qualities that allow ORE to work in an enterprise ecosystem. ORE is a stateless engine written in C++. It can be downloaded or compiled. It's OS independent, it has multiple deployment options, local in the cloud, and it can be containerized. It has flexible integration through command line interface or Python interfaces and has web service support such as REST APIs. It's easy to integrate with through XML and flat file formats. All of these are structured and have well-defined schemas. It has robust input validation, error handling, and logging, and comes with a suite of examples that allows for rapid development. Enterprise ecosystems are the vast number of different technologies, deployments, vendors, all interconnected, trying to support the users and business goals of an organization. Enterprise risk systems must fit into an organization's ecosystem and meet the unique business requirements and integration challenges. ORE achieves this by following a common batch processing enterprise risk design pattern. Next, we'll talk about a design pattern for batch processing enterprise risk solutions. But let's first define a few terms. A design pattern is a reusable solution to a commonly occurring problem within a given context. And here, that commonly occurring problem is one, batch processing. That is a workflow method of processing data and calculations in batch rather than in real time. And two, enterprise risk solutions meaning a financial risk solution that operates at an enterprise scale. In this diagram, we move from left to right. Well, across the bottom, we have processes that span the entire solution. First, we start with input data. This can come from files or perhaps databases. The key here is that it comes in different formats and might even become available at different times. Therefore, we need a transformation layer coupled with the scheduler below to receive the input files and data, convert them to the native format so that they're ready for the engine's consumption, as well as managing the dependencies to make sure that all critical data is received before progressing to the next step. The result is a complete set of input data in the native format. All this gets housed in an input store, which will contain all the calculations input files under a single job session. For example, this could be the input data for today's risk calculation. And this is needed since the engine is stateless. An input store allows for rerunability, audibility, as well as facilitating a corrections process. The next process block in this design pattern is a job processor. This can take many approaches and vary widely between simple and complex. It's probably the place with the most variability between implementations. Here, I'm taking a simple use case. Once the calculation is kicked off, the job processor manages the run. It optimizes the job by splitting the calculation into subjobs. It hosts a calculation queue for distributing the work to the calc servers. It may use a fixed number of calc servers or spin up an optimal number of calc servers based on job details. Here we have our calculation grid, which in this design is a cluster of identical calc servers. These servers pull for available subjobs from the calc queue, retrieve input data, and run the calculation. Raw results are stored locally, and failed calcs are retried. Subjob status is updated on the calc queue once completed. The servers will continue to pull and run subjobs until there are none left on the queue. Then this job processor considers the calculation complete 
and moves on to the next step. A result processor is a post-processing step that takes all the separate raw results produced by the calc servers and combines them. It may load these results into a data warehouse for permanent storage or keep them in a file format. Finally, to make the results available and usable by the end users, some kind of reporting layer is needed. In this case, we have a BI processor that takes the processed results and pushes them into an OLAP BI system for end user analysis. The scheduler is used to monitor task statuses and dependencies and moves the orchestration from task to task until the entire workflow is complete. Centralized logging is used by all the tasks to make monitoring and operational support efficient. Alerts can be triggered during the entire workflow if any failures occur that require human intervention. An implementation of the full design pattern brings into shape what the end state of the solution will look like. It's a bit more complicated now. We can now determine what technologies can be used and what business requirements will be in scope for the implementation project. A simplified implementation of the design pattern shows how a workable solution can be rapidly put together with off-the-shelf open source tools that address many of the requirements. It opens the door for a minimum viable product that would be ready for production use. Now let's switch gears. I'm going to showcase ORE as an enterprise risk solution using the simplified implementation approach just shown. Here we have a solution written in Apache Airflow. All these are different tasks in the orchestration and they're all written in Python. ORE is running inside of each of these different calc servers. There's three of them. ORE and all the components here are running in a Docker containers on my local computer. I'm going to run the workflow now and walk through each step afterwards. Oh, and before I click start, over here on the left are three workspace folders used by the solution. You'll see as it runs that files are moved from folder to folder as various tasks are run. All right, let's click begin. Okay, the system is spinning up. You'll see input files have appeared in the input folder. Now they've moved through the ETL logic. The job processor picked them up and distributed the portfolio files and other files to the calc servers. And now the calculations have spent, spun up. The calculations instances will complete at different times since they're each running different calculations. Okay, first the second, then the first, and then the third at the end. Once all three are completed, the result processor picks up the result files and brings them to a single output folder. What we saw during the demo was the following. An initialization step that prepares the system for the run, a file polar that pulls for all the input files and routes them to internal ETL folders, also archiving the input files for audit purposes. Next, the ETL process converts the ABC CSV file into the ORE XML format. The XYZ file was already in the ORE XML format, so that was just copied forward. The market data and fixing files were also in the native format, so they were copied forward as well. Next is the job processor. This routes the ORE XML files to predefined ORE engines. We have three here. The ABC file goes to engine one, and the XYZ file goes to engine two and three. Uh, each of these is doing different calculations. The market data files go to all three engines. Each ORE engine is a container that spins up and runs a pre-configured calculation with the input files. The results are written locally to each engine's workspace. Lastly, each engine's results are copied to a central location for downstream processing. As I mentioned before, Airflow is running in Docker containers. Each ORE instance is running in its own Docker container. Here I'm just calling them ORE engines. And all of this is deployed locally using Docker Compose. 
runtime folders and files and configurations are all automatically deployed through batch scripts. Here are some solution highlights. First, we're using open source ORE installed through a Python pip command. We're also using Apache Airflow, which is used and well supported by the open source community. All components are hosted by Docker, that's Airflow and ORE. And we're using a single Docker Compose for Airflow and ORE engines. And this allows for version control, easy teardown and redeployment. It's host system agnostic and quite portable. We have scripted deployments, and that means all the folders and configurations and all the Docker commands are all scripted. The workflow itself is robust and rerunnable. It has exception handling. It auto cleans working directories even after failures and uses simple methods for intercomponent communications. All inbound and outbound files are archived for auditability. It's also easy to expand and customize. Everything's in Python, ETLs are plugins. You can increase and decrease the number of OE Docker engines and comes with example input files and calculation files. Since this was a simple MVP, it has some limitations, which are really opportunities for improvements as the system matures. First, it's not a complete implementation of the design pattern, so it's missing some key features. Next, it's restricted to a single machine, the Docker host, with a fixed number of ORE instances that are defined during the configuration. Improvements could be made by increasing the performance and flexibility. For example, you could use Docker Swarm for dynamic capacity capabilities or combine with a task distribution system like Airflow, Celery. And you could redesign the system to use REST APIs for better intercomponent communication. Next, we have the job processing and calc rules being static. To optimize this, the system could be designed to analyze the portfolio makeup at runtime, like how many trades there are and the product types, in order to determine the best way to distribute the jobs across all the servers. This kind of solution would leverage Airflow Celery and Docker Swarm. Finally, Result processing needs actual business requirements before it can properly merge results into a downstream system. Here we have some links to where you can find and download ORE, Airflow, and Docker. And hopefully now you've seen how easy ORE can fit into an enterprise ecosystem. Feel free to reach out to us at Acadia if you'd like to learn more or do a deeper dive. Thank you so much for your time.